The forest ranger returned from patrol and was rushing home when he suddenly heard gunshots in the distance. What the hell, he thought, hunting season hasn't even started yet. As he took a step forward, he couldn't help but wonder if poachers were trespassing on his territory again. It had been quiet for several years, but now it was dusk again, and he was freezing and anxious to get home to his wife and son. Do we have to hunt down these scum again? If there were more of them and he was alone and his old gun. Nicholas raised the gun and fired into the air. Walking to the clearing, he saw from a distance the carcass of a wolf, the prey abandoned by poachers on the snow. It seems they left on their own, not wanting to cause trouble. Well, never again, thought Nicholas, the forester. He leaned over to look at the wolf's body and found a wolf pup less than two months old next to it. It was whimpering and motionless next to its mother's body. Nicholas swore and swore at the villains, accusing them of not being able to see or understand the object of their shooting, and to deprive a she-wolf of her life, knowing that it would kill her children. Maybe this is bad luck, brother, Nicholas said to the wolf cub, I can't save your mother, but I will help you, just don't bite me. He boldly reached out his hand and touched the little wolf cub gently, head, gently scratching its ears. The little wolf cub bent over and suddenly let out a cry of sorrow that would have shocked even a forester who had seen the world. He carefully picked up the little wolf cub, stuffed it into his arms, and walked quickly towards his home. Son Wafka was very happy with this gift. The little gray wolf cub was lying alone in the box next to the spacious stove. His father said, don't bully it, son, it is an orphan and has no mother. Wafka fed the wolf cub with a bottle, and then taught it to learn from the plate. Licking inside. It gradually grew up and began to play in the yard. Although it was small, its character was already very warlike. One day, a joke turned true. The young man was bitten by a wolf cub. There was a bandage on his finger. Through the bandage, a large amount of bright red blood was revealed. The cub continued to growl in his high-pitched childish voice, and the lad named him Tooth, which he thought was a very suitable name for the tiny gray villain. When the wolf pup grows up, the forest ranger takes it with him to patrol the forest. Nikolai knew many places to collect mushrooms and fruits, and sometimes they would meet people in the forest. The wolf pup doesn't cause trouble, but its favorite position is head down, staring from below, looking focused and unfriendly. Recently, Nikolai started wearing a chain on tooth because the neighbors were unhappy with the sudden appearance of a wolf in their village, even though it was still very small. This was a restraint for the beloved offspring of the little wolf cub, which did not like being restrained and began to often escape to the forest, and when Tooth returned, Tony Lyle gave loud and varied solo concerts at home, causing many neighbors to complain. One day, the grown-up wolf cub never came back from the forest. The young man looked around and called for his friend, but it never came back. He sat in front of the window and stared at the edge of the forest, wondering if the teeth would appear again. He cried, begging his father to find his friend, but he knew there was a good chance they would never see each other again. The father tried his best to comfort his son, telling him that this was normal and that the wolf should live with its own kind, which would be better for it. Most importantly, we helped it in a difficult moment that it may never forget. A year later, it was amazing that this strong, healthy man had never complained or experienced a heart attack. The mother packed her bags, closed the door, and they moved to the city. Nikolai began studying at the city school when he was already 15, but he still could not come to terms with his father's death. He missed him, missed the village, rural life, his friends and neighbors, but above all he missed the forest and his gray friend, wondering whether it was alive now and whether he would ever see him again. He vowed that once he completed his studies and became an adult, he would return to the village and his father's home. My mother didn't like the idea, but soon she remarried, little siblings were born, and she devoted herself entirely to her education. Vladimir completed his studies and then entered a vocational and technical school, but finally decided to realize his dream and return to village life. Where are you going, 
his mother asked as she watched him pack his luggage. I just went to take a look, Vladimir replied, and when his mother looked at him anxiously, he added, I just went to scout and see what was going on at home. I haven't been there for a long time. I miss you very much. Don't be angry, I will be back soon, and I will drop by my father's grave. A few days later, the mother stayed in the city to take care of her little daughter, while the son went to visit the old hunter's grave. The village greets him in a friendly manner, filled with haunting smells and sounds, smoke and the barking of the neighbor's dog. God, he hasn't been here in five years, that's for sure. The next day, local friends, who had grown up with Vladimir, came to visit him and stayed together until evening. They shared all the village news, who got married, who died, who was born, and told anecdotes and jokes about the village. How long has it been since we were kids, Vladimir sighed. Do you still remember the days when we climbed trees in the orchard to steal apples? Do you still remember that there was a little wolf in our village called Tooth, maybe someone has seen it in the forest, but the companions shook their heads, and they were once again immersed in the memories, laughing and hugging each other late into the night. The next morning, Vladimir was preparing to go to the forest, and on the way decided to visit his father's grave. In a cemetery in the countryside, he accidentally discovered his father's special shotgun, which is still hanging on a nail. Trembling with joy, he thought, this is just what I need. He felt that this way, his father would be with him again. He picked up his jacket and walked slowly toward the forest. On the way, he turned into a rural cemetery, sat down in front of his father's grave, and told everything he had accumulated over the years. He urgently needs to talk, vent his heart, and find answers to some important questions in his heart. The narrow paths led deep into the forest, places that were very familiar to him, and the forest was still his familiar home. He thought to himself, city life is really not suitable for me, this is where I belong. He walked quietly, lost in his own thoughts and memories. He had completely forgotten how to act in the forest lest he accidentally encounter wild animals. He didn't even realize that a bear had emerged from his path, a large, black beast dozens of meters away. He couldn't run away, and his heart sank to its lowest point, preparing for the worst. However, the bear didn't move, just kept breathing in and assessing the situation. These few minutes seemed like an eternity to Vladimir, but suddenly, an angry roar came from the bushes on the right, and a huge wolf emerged, roared at the bear, and turned to Vladimir Mir. There was something familiar in his grey beast's eyes. Suddenly, the old wolf gritted its teeth, roared, and walked straight towards the bear. Vladimir realized that the wolf was protecting him. Deciding not to get involved in the fight, the bear turned and disappeared into the thick brush. At this time, Vladimir thought of something and murmured in a low voice, Tooth, is it you, my dear Tooth? This is indeed it. He stepped forward and licked Vladimir's face, and the wolf understood that his friend was no longer in danger, so he curled up next to him and laid his head on his knees. Vladimir wiped away his tears and stroked the giant wolf's head. Finally, we met, and you haven't forgotten anything. Father was right. You really haven't forgotten anything. I will always remember you, he hugged the wolf tighter. If you like this story, Please like and subscribe to this channel, there will be more interesting content coming soon. Good luck. Let's continue. How did the stories develop? If it's your first time here, if you want to know some new stories that will make you wise and knowledgeable, make sure to subscribe to us and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. She wanted to take a walk today along the trails around Colorado Springs. That's a creek near her house. There is a paved path here. A bear died last Thursday. After browsing through suggestions from netizens, she decided to go for a walk in the forest with some tools, Svito, 26, is about to be 6 months pregnant, she was walking when she saw a 225 pound cinnamon colored black bear fall from the sky. I thought it was a dog at first, a big dog, but it's a cute bear, Svito said, then she walked another 100 meters, the bear has been following her, but always a few meters away from her. It trotted after me. And then after I walked a few blocks, it left, Svito said, she told the story in a pre-recorded interview with BBC News in Horror, 
her experience was like a war or an escape, but she can't fight a bear. So she keeps running that she started running and yelling for help, but no one around hears her. After going through the underpass, she walked on her way home. Then things got worse. Although it was a bad day, Svito is still running hard, there is no crosswalk in this lane that she saw on. Older woman sitting in the car, Svito thinks the vehicles will let her go first. And cars always stop to let them pass, but this car doesn't do that, Svito was hit by the driver that the driver did not step on brake that she was knocked down, she fell to the ground and stood up again, the driver rolled down the window that she said she was slowing down. Svito told the driver that she is being chased by a bear. So the woman didn't apologize and didn't ask if she was hurt that she left quickly. No one wants to stop and help her. Svito returns home with her fiance, Dai Li participated in today's program with her. She was so scared and she told him what happened. Local police were called to investigate the incident. She also went to the hospital to make sure she and the baby were not hurt that she told her fiancé that I can't believe this story is true that this is crazy. Police, cameras and journalists showed up within minutes. The bear later turned up in someone's yard that IT seems to come here often. The staff anesthetized the bear before euthanizing it, Svito blamed by neighbors, they say she gave the bear an untimely. Death, this bear is often seen in neighbors' yards, this article was published by a local newspaper, some negative comments have appeared in Svito's chat room and message boards, Svito said it was just made up by the publishing house that they never interviewed her, she didn't know the bear was going to be killed when she reported the incident that IT wasn't her intention. She wouldn't have reported this if she knew they were going to do it, she never blamed the bear when people were blaming her, but she wonders if the bear bit a small child so it was euthanized on Saturday, the woman who hit Svito was an officer, will she be charged with a crime that it's not clear. Svito not sure if she wants to sue that I didn't get hit by it, she said but in the meantime I want to ask her that why didn't she stop that if it were me, I would do this anyway, if it were you. Would you move on? Both Svito and Dai Li gave everyone affirmative answers. When their baby is born, they want the bear to be treated with respect. This doctored news is meaningless. Bear will be the child's middle name. Here's another story. A man says his dog was attacked by a bear. It did that to save his son. On the day, Chris was chased by a big black bear. His Labrador retriever willingly sacrificed its life. He would probably be dead without this dog. Toby is a black Labrador retriever. It is a friendly and intelligent dog. It likes to sneak out and play with other kids. Vic says it speaks at least two English words that he can say water and hello. This is what I taught him. Vic laughed that he would say these words to Toby, and the dog's voice gets noticeably louder when he says this. Toby wasn't trained to hunt, but the first time he hung out with Vic's son, that he swam out and caught some birds. After being told not to do so, Toby never bothered the birds again about 11 miles east of Sandhill Cranes near Vic's home that you don't know how much I miss that dog, the 67-year-old said. Toby was killed by a black bear near his backyard at around 5 p.m. on May 21 that he was accompanying Vic's son Chris, 45, on an expedition. They walk on a trail leading to a 25-acre woods. They reached an open meadow again. You can see from the house that there are many mushrooms here. Vic said that we only eat mushrooms, Chris said. It was troublesome, then they collected a batch of mushrooms that we picked a lot of mushrooms and filled this bag, then I heard strange noises in the woods ahead that I thought it was a man standing by a tree watching us, then he noticed two bear cubs in another tree that they climb high, meanwhile an adult male bear walks across a farm field that there are several bears there, when we looked back, the bear was still standing there. And then Toby came over and looked at Chris after a few minutes it disappeared into the bushes, Toby ran back to me like a frightened dog, Chris says that a 300 pound bear was chasing the dog, and it was going at least 25 mph Chris says, Toby stopped when he got to me. then it turned to face the bear, then it charged and knocked the bear down, Chris said Toby became very irritable and moved very quickly, Chris ended up climbing back about 10 meters. This bear attacked his dog savagely, Chris said he had never seen anything so violent in his life, John Vick says the bear caught Toby, Toby is no match for the bear. It's pure violence, Chris said he ran to the house at breakneck speed. I've been running away and when I first got to the house, it was shot. There are many stars in front of my eyes that I lost my hat, my mushrooms and my jacket, the next day I pulled a thorn out of my head, this is the cruelest thing nature has ever done to me. There is a big wood that he said. 
The bear and the cub are big, I've seen them cross the road, that he thinks the bear has been around for years that IT bothers them, they can kill a calf in a shed that even if they put some utensils, maybe that's why the neighbor's girl feeds the horse that from gentle to grumpy, the bear speeds up its attack that IT almost killed Chris, but Toby saved his life. That's something I'm pretty sure of. Chris isn't sure, but I'm pretty sure the bear doesn't have any interest in me, he said that we just met the bear family under the wrong circumstances that it's not a good place for a dog, especially a big black dog that he hasn't even got his hat back yet. Nobody can get out, the bear attacks, its attack hit the dog. I'm getting out of the woods, Chris said that IT may still be out. Toby's paw hurt, it was a 4-6 to six inch deep gash that IT has bite marks on its shoulders, the bear knocked it down that IT was trying to drag Toby to its lair. Then I went and brought back Toby that I grew up on a farm and I know it well. Toby was seriously injured trying to save Chris that IT did its best. So they loaded Toby into the car and took him to the vet. I don't know this vet, but I have a lot of respect for him that IT was past 11 o'clock that night that he's doing everything he can to save Toby's life, John said the dog was there from the night of May 21st to the night of May 24 th that when it is brought home that IT is drinking water but not eating. Its condition got worse on Monday, John said. John was busy at work that day that he is a bus driver. His work was very busy that day that he had to work longer hours that day, because the students are all going to the memorial. Day service that he said, in fact, I can see that Toby's health is going from bad to worse. Toby was drinking water when he suddenly spit out white foam. They sent it to the clinic, the veterinarians immediately tried their best to save it, Toby was sent to the medical department of the Ivy League University and spent the night at the veterinarian. The month after I left him, it died that so I asked the Vic family to bury it in the backyard, John said that he plans to put a concrete sign over the grave that IT read, Toby, the dog who saved my son, dot thanks for watching, please like and share this video with your friends, remember to subscribe us, dot see you later.